Good evening, everyone. My name is Radakel, and I am a project coordinator at OPA. So we'll be starting in five minutes, just to give time for other people to join. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a question. All the attendees uh, uh, from Arabic countries, or uh, we can continue with the presentation in Arabic or continue in no, English? No, just... no. Uh, attendees are from so many countries, so it's preferred to talk in English. What? It's preferred to talk in English because the attendees are from different countries. Okay. I would like to inform you that we are live on, on YouTube also. So if anyone don't find the room, because our capacity is only 100 people, so are at 95 now. So if anyone don't find a room in this uh, Zoom meeting, you can join us on YouTube and watch this webinar. We'll be starting in a few minutes, hopefully. Good evening, Engineer Karim. Can you hear me well? Yes, I hear you. Oh, yes, Jed, I can hear you well so far. Can you hear me? Yes, your voice is clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good evening everyone. I would like to welcome you to this webinar under the title of the link fluid that we conducted by Engineer Amr Ibrahim. My name is Jad Akel and I work as a project coordinator at OPA. The agenda for today's session will be first, Engineer Karim Magdi will be delivering a presentation about OPA August Coast Plan. Then, Engineer Amr Ibrahim will conduct a technical session. So now, Engineer Karim, the set is yours. Oh, yes, thank you, Jed. I hope you are all doing well, and I hope my voice is clear and there is no fluctuation. Uh, please, Jed, guide me if there is any fluctuation or cutting of my voice. So good evening, everyone. Uh, I will just take this uh, uh, maximum five minutes to give a brief about OPE and the, our upcoming service. Uh, and before all, I want to thank Engineer Ram Ibrahim to be with us in this webinar. And I hope you will enjoy it, inshallah. Okay.
كريم على السيرفر ده يو ار ميوتد يس يس اي كان اوكي ام سوري بيكوز ذير از سام فويس بيسايد So uh, shortly, I will go through our upcoming course. Uh, and as you can see on my screen, we have uh, a group of recorded courses like Hisis of Prosper Safari and Gap. And this is our original prices before any discount. Each course is around 15 hours. Uh, and some courses are about uh, 30 hours. Each course has its own exercise and assignment. And you will get a full support from the instructors who already give the course. And uh, upon finalizing your assignments, you can ask for your certificate of completion or achievement. These are the discounts, the normal uh, table of discounts, depending on the number of courses. Uh, as you can see, it starts from 15% uh, and it may reach around 50%. And you are, if you are an ambassador, uh, for sure you will have an extra discount. And this is our current offer due, uh, for the Eid al Adha. Uh, you can get any course at a uh, flash sale discount, just only pay 50% of its original price. Uh, any one of our uh, 12 delivered the course before. So simply, if you want to uh, have any one of these courses, yeah, you can scan this barcode or uh, simply uh, you can contact us uh, using the WhatsApp or LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever you want. Okay, so for our uh, second wave of courses, as I mentioned, we delivered around 12 courses and uh, the upcoming one is uh, the BVT analysis course. It will be two weeks uh, for learning and additional week for projects. So it's around uh, 30 to uh, 35 hours of live, uh, of live training. Uh, each day it will be three hours and there will be some days off to, to take a rest and to make assignments. Uh, in the project week, uh, it would be uh, five days. Each day is around one to two hours to discuss and to make exercises. Uh, these exercises and assignments are real case studies from a uh, practical point of view as an instructor will support. And uh, at the end of this course, as for sure, uh, you can ask for your certificate. Okay, so this is the offer now. You have around 25% uh, off. And uh, if you are an ambassador, you will have an additional uh, discount. So what's the meaning of ambassador? Ambassador means that uh, you attended any of our live courses, you, uh, you, you got uh, one of our recorded courses, you, uh, you were enrolled in any of our OBA service, you mean that you are an ambassador and you are, uh, have a full support from OBA and, and instructors and, this, and for sure special uh, discounts. And this is the new service uh, and the first uh, one of its type will be launched uh, by the end of this uh, month, this is called the four by four program of your program. It's simply uh, four sessions, uh, four hours, one hour per day. And this is very, uh, very cheap, no, not, not costly at all. It's only around $4.44. So uh, also simply uh, uh, engineer Ibrahim, who is an uh, instructor today for the webinar, uh, he will start the first program with style of four by four program. As you can see, uh, 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 you can attend this program at a very low cost. Simply you can go to our OPE also ask for this program. Uh, some simple rules for this webinar, please keep your microphone muted and camera closed. Uh, put your question in the chat box and we are here to, uh, uh, to, ask, to, to collect your questions and uh, ask the instructor. Please use for use full name uh, uh, as you written in the registration form, so that we can it can be easy for us to uh, prepare that the certificate of attendance, and note that certificates will be sent within one week from today. Thank you, and judge the stage is yours. Thank you, Jim Karim. So the both links for the four by four drilling fluid uh, and the PVD analysis course are shared uh, in the chat. So you can uh, take a look uh, on them. And also, please, uh, as you said, if you have uh, uh, joined this meeting with uh, not your name, please make sure to change it. Also, our capacity is 100 now. So if any one of your friends is trying to join, uh, and he can't because we reached our limit, so we are live on YouTube. Uh, right now, I will introduce Engineer Amr for you before starting his technical session. So. Engine Amman has graduated from the Faculty of Petroleum and Mining Engineering in 2011. He has planning 
He was planning to become an instructor since joining Egyptian Drilling Skills, EDS, a company for training and technical consultation. He joined Halliburton in Egypt in 2011 as a drilling fluid engineer for both land and offshore rigs. 2018, Giram moved to Cass A as a drilling fluid engineer at NB Petroleum Services. He is currently a drilling fluid engineer at Schlumberger. Giram is a certified instructor and assessor for IWCF service BOP stack. Thank you. And now, Engineer Ahmed, the is yours. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thanks, uh, Engineer Jihad, and thanks, Engineer Karim, for this opportunity, and thanks for the introduction. And I'm welcoming uh, everyone in the session. I'm very thrilled that uh, the room is full now. <laughs> uh, welcome, all of you on board. So uh, I will just uh, share my screen. So my screen now is... Uh... Yes. Yes, it's visible. Okay. So uh, as all of, of us, uh, as all of you know, when we are uh, introducing any uh, webinar, introductory webinar on, uh, on drilling fluid, we should uh, provide uh, the overview of the drilling. Okay. We, uh, we should introduce the introduction about uh, drilling fluid function. But uh, I want this webinar not to be just technical webinar. I want it to be practical. I mean, I want to um, deliver the full picture uh, from the field. Um, most of you can find uh, any webinars or uh, technical data and presentations all over uh, the internet and even uh, videos for uh, explaining the concepts. But I will divide the session, one hour session today uh, to be, I will go back to this one. I will uh, talk about the agenda. Uh, it will be drilling fluid function overview. And uh, I will just take two main functions which are the pressure control and hole cleaning. I will try to finish uh, this part at uh, 30 minutes. And then we will talk the other 30 minutes about the mud engineer day on the rig. And I think this is um, core value info that you will take from this today's uh, session. I will um, uh, deliver the picture for you, uh, how I spent my day on the rig, what are my responsibilities how I do my job. So I hope you enjoy the session. Uh, a quick bio about myself, engineer Jihad already introduced me, just uh, I graduated from uh, petroleum mining engineer, 2011. I worked at the drilling field engineer since 2011 till now in three companies, uh, Halliburton, MB, and then uh, currently Schlumberger in my cycle. And I am also accredited uh, an instructor and assessor for AWCF and World Sharp uh, Service Viewing. So let's not to waste time and we will start directly. Uh, so what are the functions of the drilling fluid? This, as I, I said, in every introductory uh, drilling fluid webinar or course, we should mention the drilling fluid function. So this, um, common uh, famous photo is just generalizing or summarizing the, the drilling fluid function. The first important one as a drilling fluid function is the control formation pressure. And we will go deeper in this function in the next slide. Just what I say now is we have two uh, two pressures, which are from the formation. We cannot control them. The first one is the formation pressure or the pool pressure. What is the source of this pool pressure? You know, this uh, formation uh, formed by sedimentation. And most of them formed in marine environment. So this solids contain in 
fluid, which is called interstitial fluid. And this fluid has overlaying rocks. Say, for example, you drill to 3,000 feet. So you have 3,000 feet of rock. Above this point, you are drilling. So you have something called the poor pressure. We will go deep in this poor pressure and formation pressure in the next slides. Just to mention that the first and the most important function of the drilling fluid is controlling the formation pressure. And without it, if we lose this function, if we lose this function, maybe we lose the primary well control. And then if we cannot uh, contain the, this kick or blow out, maybe we lose equipment and we will lose personnel. So this is the most and the most important function of the drilling fluid at all, controlling the formation pressure. The second most important function is to remove the solids. This one, remove the drilling solids or drilling cutting from the hole, which is hole cleaning. And also we will go deeper in this most important, second most important function at the uh, hole cleaning part. Okay. The third function is to suspend the cutting while dynamic, uh, while static condition. You know that we are drilling, so we running the pump on. So when the pump is on, we are in the dynamic condition. But when the bomb is off, we are in the static condition and we have a long time while the bomb is off. Once we finish drilling, we start tripping out. And this tripping out most of the time on elevator, which is bomb is off. After finished tripping, we start to run the casing and this operation also is bomb is off. Maybe we do wire line before wireline logging, bomb is off. So we need to have a fluid. This fluid can suspend the solids while, uh, while static condition. Another function, which is this one, maintain the borehole stability. And the, the true mud engineering come with this function maintain the borehole stability. Most of the time, when you can uh, give us a name as a mud engineer, different name from mud engineer or drilling fluid engineer, you can name us as shale engineer. Because actually, all the time, we are trying to work with the shale, trying to maintain the borehole stability. So, the shale is, what is the problem of the shale? The shale is the compacted clay. You know, the clay is very water saturated mineral. And when it's compacted and some of the water go out, it produces the shale. The shale, if this shale start to see water again, this shale starts to do something called the swelling and the sloughing. It will cause maybe hole back off. It will cause hole enlargement. It will cause bore hole instability. So all the time, while we are working with the drilling fluid parameters, we are trying to deal with the shale. And any in any formation, when you find the shale, so you start your engineering. Actually, most of the chemical addition, most of the new technology about the drilling fluid, just concern about how to work with the shale. The shale is the most difficult formation we drill. And even the shale itself, we can divide it into different, different categories. The reactive shale, the, uh, the, nor the normal shale, and this reactive shale is very problematic. I will not, I don't have time for going deeper in this uh, very important function, but inshallah in the next four by four course, 
I will uh, assign a one complete session for the borehole stability and uh, shale stability. Because as I told you, it's the true engineering while working with shale. Another important function for the draining fluid is this one, provide the, the horsepower to the bit. As most of you know, we are not drilling just with the bit and drill string. We have mud motor and we have MWD. When we are drilling deviated or horizontal, we need something to deliver this horsepower to uh, those equipment. For example, the mud motor, when we make uh, the, the the traditional mud motor, I don't take, talk about the RSS technology. The traditional mud motor is working with the mud. This mud uh, pump it through its uh, impellers, the stator and uh, the, the rotor and the stator, and with this uh, movement of the mud inside the mud motor, it's it's working. Also, MWD, MWD when it make its uh, measurement. This measurement transported to the to the service using uh, the mud as a medium. So it's a very important function for the drilling flow. Another function is to lubricating the drill string. You know we are drilling in a deeper formation and uh, a high temperature. So if we didn't uh, lubricate and and the cooling the drill string, maybe some something like thermal fatigue will happen. So it's important also for lubrication and cooling the drill string. This is just a quick overview about the drilling fluid function. I will go deeper in two drilling fluid functions, which is the formation uh, pressure and hole cleaning. The other uh, functions, as I told you, I will go deeper for them in the next 4x4 course. So let's start with the most important function all the time. The pressure control is the most important function all the time for the draining fluid. It's all about pressure, really. If you lose your pressure, you will lose everything. So as I told you, the poor pressure depend on what? Depend on the density of the overlaying rocks and depend on the pressure of the interstitial fluid, which is trapped inside these rocks. And where is the rock is self-supporting or supported by the fluid? You know, some fluid, some, some rocks don't have much, uh, much inter interstitial fluid to support on it. So maybe it's just self-supporting or maybe it is supported by the fluid. So the pressure will depend. So we have the poor pressure. The poor pressure is the pressure inside the formation. And here we introduce very important concept in the oil, in the drilling fluid industry, which is the mud window. We have two pressures. This one, the formation pressure or the poor pressure. And this one is the fracture pressure. These two pressures, we cannot control. We just work with them. I mean, this is out of our hands. This is characteristics of the formation. This is formation parameters. So we just try to work with them. We cannot change them. So what is in our hand is the mud hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure, when we divide this uh, word, hydro plus static, Static, as we said before, in the static condition, when the pump is off. And the hydro is come from uh, the aqueous phase or the, the water. So it's just the, the pressure of the hydrostatic column of the mud in the static condition. And this is very important. When we calculate the hydrostatic pressure of the mud, or when we calculate the pressure that will be sufficient for the formation pressure, we should calculate it in the static condition. And we should 
count on keeping the well secure in the static condition. Because in the dynamic condition, we have another concept called the ECD. We will talk about it. The ECD is the equivalent circulating density when we have dynamic condition. So in this mod window, we have the hydrostatic pressure that we can control. It should be higher than the formation pressure or the bore pressure, and it should be less than the fracture pressure to avoid fracturing the formation. And this is called the mud window. It's a very important concept. And from this concept, we get, you know, uh, a new industry or a new technology, which is called the MBD. When we have very narrow window, for example, this formation pressure with the BBG is 9.1, and this is 9.2. <laughs> this is very narrow window. When we are static, maybe we got a kick, and when we are dynamic, maybe we uh, fracture the formation. So we, we have a technology now called the MBD, the Managed Pressure Drilling, which controls the surface pressure to provide the suitable hydrostatic pressure. This is not our uh, topic now, but just highlighting it. Okay, so the pressure control for safe drilling formation pressure must be contained with the hole to prevent damage to the equipment and injury to the personnel. If we lose, when we when we we instructing the uh, the introductory session about the well control, first thing we said we have primary well control, which is the drilling fluid. If we lose this primary well control, we will switch to the POB, which is the secondary well control. But even when we close the well and measure shot and drill by pressure, shot and kissing pressure, killing the well, all what we are doing is retrieve the primary uh, well control, which is the mud. So it's all about pressure. Again, just try to remember this word. It's all about pressure. In our industry, it's all about pressure. Okay, so uh, as I told you, our hydrostatic pressure should be greater than the formation pressure. But how much this greater? So we are using something called the drip margin, which is called, or the safe margin, which is around 100 to 200 BSI. We don't want to have higher uh, hydrostatic pressure than required to avoid doing, uh, to avoid in, in, uh, inducing the fractures or inducing losses. So we just use 100 to 200 BSI as a trip margin. And, and the word trip margin is just taking from the tripping and because most of the operation after the drilling is tripping out the drill string, tripping in the casing. So we need to have trip margin around 100 to 200 BSI. Okay, this is the equation of the hydrostatic pressure. Very important equation. And pressure control is the most important function of the drilling fluid. And this equation is the most important equation in the oil industry at all. This equation is controlling or calculating the hydrostatic pressure. The, hydro the hydrostatic pressure simply, it is the multiplication of the mud weight and the true vertical depths, true vertical depths. And this highlighted one is the most common one because we use the mud weight in the BBG and the depths in feet. And this uh, constant is just uh, converting units constant. BBG is bound per gallon, and this is feet. And we will calculate the hydrostatic pressure bound square, uh, bound per uh, square inch. So just when we convert all of these units, it will give us this constant. Same for other equation. 
So in this picture, we have here drilling fluid inside the drill string, drilling fluid at the annulus. This drilling fluid is proposing a hydrostatic pressure. This hydrostatic pressure should be higher than the formation pressure. Just see this one. It's a part of a video. So this mud here is proposing a hydrostatic pressure. It should be higher than the formation pressure. And if we lose this and we have the pore pressure higher than the mud hydrostatic pressure, so we will have a water or fluid intrusion, a kick, then flow out if we didn't control it. So it's very important to keep our well secured with the hydrostatic pressure. So it's again, it's all about pressure. The, the, before we left this, uh, this concept, I want to introduce the concept of ECD, equivalent circulating density. As I told you, we have hydrostatic pressure while the static condition, and we have different pressure while dynamic condition, which is the ECD. And the ECD is the pressure increase applied to the bottom hole pressure resulting from the anaerobic pressure loss. So if we go back to this slide, when we are bumping the fluid here, we're bumping it with the pump, with bumping pressure, say for example, 2000 PSI. Anyone go to a drilling rig know that when the fluid come back to the surface on the flow line, it will come as a normal fluid stream. When you see it, you cannot say that this fluid is pumped with 2000 PSI. So where this 2000 PSI go? It go in the frictions. Friction all over this way from the rig pump down to the drill string, out at the pit, and then going in the annulus. And just a note, side note, we design the hydraulic of the drilling fluid to lose most of its pressure at the drilling bit. And this is something called the, uh, the, the jetting action to have a better hole cleaning. Okay, so we are concerned about this part, the pressure loss in the annulus. When the drilling fluid lose this pressure in the annulus, so where is this go? This pressure is applied to the formation. The fluid which is lost from the drilling fluid in the annulus affect the formation. So there is a pressure increase due to dynamic condition and this pressure increase will be reported as the ECD. This part is the inner pressure loss over the depth over uh, multiplied by 0.052. We just convert the, this pressure loss to BBG and uh, and add it to the original density and we will have the ECD. So we have hydrostatic pressure, say for example, it's equivalent to 9.5 BBG. So maybe we have 9.7 BBG dynamic ECD or equivalent ECD. So this 0.2 increase is due to the inner operation loss affected by uh, the loss of friction in the annulus and this pressure transfer to the formation, okay? So I will just have a look in the questions before going to whole cleaning, uh, uh, whole cleaning part. Okay, we have question here. 
which kind of uh, the procedure okay shall be made to have uh, satisfactory borehole stability as i said it is a uh, very wide topic the shale uh, stability and the borehole stability and the, with this time frame i cannot assign a part of this uh, slide uh, webinar for for uh, answering this but just a quick answer the most important thing for borehole stability is to prevent the water to come to the shale okay so we need some we we do something called inhibition we uh, uh, uh we can see your screen right now you can see it no right now we can't see it. we can only see the mouse okay if you can move this chat the chat uh, what about this yes just move it away okay. from the screen okay okay so uh so as i told we just make something called inhibition and this is preventing the water to contact the shield we do something uh, called encapsulation we we use some chemicals called um, amines which is make encapsulating to the shield we reduce the uh, the filtration uh, properties i mean uh, the water loss and when we have reactive shale, so we cannot drill with water based mud anymore, we have to switch to oil based mud. And the oil based mud, it's already have water inside its composition, but it is not actually water. Because when we add the emulsifier, it transferred from the water phase to the emulsified phase. So the shale will not see water. That's why we, uh, we use oil based mud in the very reactive shale. What is the composition of the draining fluid? Um, quickly, but uh, it's not the scope of this session also. The, the composition of the draining fluid is we treat the water that we mix, uh, that we mix in with uh, something called the uh, soda ash and the caustic soda. We increase the pH, we reduce the hardness, we add emulsifiers, uh, sorry, in this, in the oil-based mud, in the water-based mud, we add uh, fluid, uh, fluid uh, loss reducing agent, we add uh, viscosifier, we add wetting material. So this is a quick overview about the uh, composition. What is the composition of the ring fluid already answered? Based on what we choose uh, this compo uh, composi composition? Based on the formation that we are drilling. For example, if we're drilling service section, all what we need is the uh, the viscosity and thick filter cake. So we use the spud mud, bentonite mud. When we drilling in reactive shale, we cannot uh, use uh, water based mud anymore. So we'll use oil based mud. When we are drilling in uh, salty formation, so we need to adjust our parameter to accept the diluted uh, salt. Which, which, which will uh, come to our, our mud. So it is based on the formation that we are drilling and also based on the cost. How we can calculate the uh, pressure loss? This is the value is uh, uh, measured by the BWD. The BWD, uh, it's a tool uh, like uh, the MWD, which is pressure while drilling. It's this uh, tool calculated uh, with accurate measurement. And also we have a uh, hydraulic uh, software that we can calculate the annual pressure loss with higher accuracy, with higher accuracy. Uh, differential pressure is something different in the um, MWD and uh, directional drilling. I will not go in it now. Uh, can you please tell, uh, guys, all of this question is out of the scope of this session, I talked about the agenda of the session. All of this uh, concept, inshallah, will be uh, described with details in the next uh, course, inshallah. Uh, where do we keep the mud fluid? In the mud tanks, and I will talk about this in the uh, second part of the session. Okay, enough now with questions. Okay, so let's go to the second uh, most important drain fluid function. 
which is the whole cleaning. When we drill, we introduce uh, solids, drilled solids. And if this solid is not transported to the surface, so we are actually not drilling. Just try to imagine yourself getting a, a home uh, uh, a home digger and just you uh, make a hole with only one feet, two feet. And if you didn't get this dirt out, so you are not drilling, you are just making the rocks softer. So we need to transport this cutting to the surface. So this cutting, this cutting has something called the uh, slip velocity. And this is affected by the gravity. This cutting tend to go down by the gravity effect. And our mission is to force it to go up, to go to the flow line, then to the solid control equipment, which is started by the shell shakers to remove the solids from this uh, mud and we can reuse it again. So the slip velocity is a function of the uh, cutting velocity and annular velocity. The cutting, uh, the cutting velocity tend to go down. And the annular velocity is the velocity of the mud in the annulus. So we need to overcome the cutting velocity so that the cutting transported to the surface. So what are the functions or the parameters that affect this cutting removal? Hello? Can you hear me, guys? Okay, my screen is uh, is on. Okay, thank you. So, so the first uh, function of the cutting removal is the inner velocity and the flow rate. Also, the cutting size, shape, and density. Another Again, the example of the top hole, we have bigger cutting size. So we have to increase the annular velocity to remove this uh, cutting from the hole. Also the viscosity. The viscosity is very important function in this because if any time you are, have a limitation, uh, of increasing the annular velocity, and already we have a limitation sometimes. For example, when we drill with uh, MWD and the mud motor, it will be there is a limitation in the uh, in the flow rate, in the flow rate. So we uh, have to. Ram, excuse me. Okay. Uh, your screen is not shared. Okay. Because the connection is go on and come back. So now it's okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. So also uh, number four is the ROB. When we drill with higher ROB and we don't have sufficient annular velocity and we have high, uh, big cutting size, so maybe we lost the uh, whole cleaning process. I will tell you. Uh, I will tell you one example from uh, the field. I already be uh, in it. 
one time we are draining service section. And in this service section, the normal ROB is around um, maximum, maximum, uh, you know, uh, 90 meters per hour. This is the maximum. Maybe the normal is around 70 to 80. Uh, the driller, um, I don't know <laughs> what uh, why he did this. He drilled two stand, two full stand, two full stand with instantaneous ROB 120 meter per hour. 120. The result of this, we have uh, a full shaker cutting. And the flow line uh, full with cutting. All the flow line. No fluid is coming. Actually, no fluid is coming because the cutting. All the well is filled with cutting. And in this time, company man was trying to pull out of the hole. I talked to him. If you are going to pull out now, you will have a stock. You have to clean the well first. Then we start to uh, initiate circulation and we see a lot of cutting coming to the shaker and flow line gradually. We did, we did this like six hours, six hours just cleaning the well. We stopped drilling for sure, six hours only cleaning the well. And I see cutting that I have never seen before. I see cutting coming out from uh, from uh, the conductor itself because it was service section. No POB installed in this time. I see cutting coming from the inductor and the shape of the conductor itself. Very big cutting. So this is the dangerous thing about ROB. Your ROB just be, should be uh, adjusted to help you clean the well. Also, RBM is very important for cleaning and pipe eccentricity. And this uh, lead us, the pipe eccentricity lead us to the next concept, which is what is the challenge of hole cleaning in the deviated and horizontal hole, uh, well, uh, wells? Okay, in this, in this part of the, of the well, we are vertical. And this vertical, we just, working with one component of the slip velocity, which is go going down. So we are using our full component of the anaerobic velocity going up and we conquer this slip velocity. But the problem starts to initiate it in the deviated and the horizontal. The slip velocity is still the same, one component going down. But our mud is distracted. Our mud force is uh, now in two direction. This is the normal direction, but we have the vertical one and horizontal one. So our under velocity is not uh, with its full power. And also here, it's very uh, tricky because the, the low side of the well is very near and the solids tend to have something called the, uh, the low side of the well. So we have a, a challenge in the whole cleaning of the deviated and horizontal wells. And you will not believe me when I talk to you that the challenge of whole cleaning in this area, in the 30 to 65 degree, is more than the challenge of cleaning the horizontal well. Maybe all of you or most of you think that this is the most challenging one, how we clean this low side. But here is more challenging. Why is this? Because something called avalanching. I will describe it with this. Okay, this uh, this was uh, I was just part of uh, of video, but because I trans transferred it to uh, the Google slide, so now it's not working. So we will describe it here. 
So this cutting, when it's trying to go up, to go up, this deviation make it to go down again. It is sliding. You know, this cutting is sliding. This cutting, okay, it's already go to the low side, but but when we just try to remove it with the tandem belt technique, it just will go with the fluid stream. But this one, no, it will go up, then go down again with the avalanching effect or the sliding effect. That's why it's a challenging. That's why this is a challenging uh, process. So in this uh, uh, the removal of cutting in this uh, area, we use the, the rotation of the drill string and try to use high annular pressure. And we try to use some technique with this low vis and high vis bills. This is different from the tandem bill techniques which you are using in the horizontal. The horizontal effect is when we try to remove the cutting from this area, try to imagine this, this drill string, we bump fluid. When the fluid coming out from the drill string, it will go to the upper side and go. It will not go to the lower side. That's why in the horizontal section, we pump something called tandem bells, which is low vis. This low vis makes something like agitating this low side and then high weight and this high weight help to take the drilling uh, solids uh, and uh, taking, taking it from this low side and uh, putting it in the vertical section of the well and the whole cleaning will be easier at uh, this point. Okay, this is a quick uh, uh, explanation for what we already described. Okay, so now I can say that we quickly finish our uh, second part of, of this webinar. I have only 15 minutes left, so I will start directly on the third part which is very important part, the mud engineer day on the rig. So every day for me in the, in the rig is a challenge because every day I have a work. You know, uh, there is some service on the rig that they don't have a job or uh, a duty every day. For example, the, the guys who are responsible for wire, wireline logging, they are not working every day. The guys for cementers, they are not working every day. The casing running crew, but the drilling crew and for, for sure company man, mud engineer, they have a job every single day. Even when you are wireline, you are preparing for the next section. Even you are casing run, you are preparing how to you will manage your tanks. So what are my responsibility on the rig? First and the first and the most important one is the inventory management. Some of you may think that the fluid properties or the fluid testing is the most important one, but I'm telling you the inventory management is the first and the most important one. Why is this? Because if you don't have the chemical on the rig for the next mixing, you will be in a deep trouble, in a big trouble. You should plan your inventory. You should plan your next section or next job chemicals. This inventory management, believe me or not, is one of the most reason for running off mud engineer from the locations. The inventory management. When you start doing your job and you don't have the, 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 the inventory 
and most of the load supervisors on the office just said this word. We don't have chemical on shelf. I cannot supply your chemical to the rig just uh, on one hour. Maybe this will not be the case. You are working on a remote place. Maybe support, supplying chemical will take half a day or more. So inventory management is the most and most critical uh, responsibility of the mother engineer. Second, second one, and in this inventory management, you should uh, have uh, a proactive planning. You should think about what should I expect. And, and also the math program is helpful in this part because you have the expectation of what you will use, but something may happen in the drilling. So you need to adjust your inventory management based on it. Second, second job for me is the pits management. I have tanks. One of the question is where I store my mud. We have tanks on the service and these tanks and its capacity, you will know it once you arrive to the rig. It's, it's easy job. But the, bit, the bits management is, is not the easy job because one time I was drilling or at the end of the drilling, I have water based mud, oil based mud. Sometimes you have brine and oil based mud. Sometimes you have three types of fluid inside your tanks. At the end of the drilling, we have cleaning bills to clean the drill string and uh, to clean the well itself before the completion job. So how to manage these tanks? How to manage your capacity? So this is very, very important. How to manage when you receive a month and when you backload this month? And the most of the time, the receiving and the backloading is about the OBM. The oil based mud. So, bits management is very important. So, the third one is the float properties. When you mix your mud and start drilling, and even before start drilling, you have <coughs> to run a test to, to see what is the parameters of your mud. And if this parameter is, is not on, on the range, or not as per program, you do your treatment. And do your treatment by the mixing recipe. You are working with a Derek man. Derek man, he don't have the knowledge of you as a mud engineer. So you have to give him a very detailed, very clear mixing recipe so that he can Follow your instruction and uh, mix what you want. And guys, try to remember the order of the mixing recipe is very important. The order of chemical addition is very important. For example, I told you before when I was answering one of the questions that we adding some chemical to treat the mixing water. Caustic soda, for example, for the pH or the alkalinity, and uh, and the soda ash, for example, for the hardness control or hardness treatment. Hardness treatment is to remove the calcium and the magnesium ion from the mud. So, if you didn't do this first, for example, if you didn't give the mixing recipe to the Derek man in order, and you start mixing the polymers first before treating the water, these polymers will not work, and you will lose your polymers. It will be waste cost. So you should treat first the, uh, the, the water, and then start adding your chemicals. In the oil-based mud also, when we mix oil-based mud, we mix it with a certain order. 
If we miss this order, we will not get what we want. So the mixing recipe should be online with the chemical order addition. One of my duties on the rig is the paperwork, and it's very important. And this paperwork include number one is the mud report. And the mud report is representing the 24 hours of your day. What did you do in this 24 hours? Did you receive chemical? Did you backload chemical? Did you receive mud, backload mud? What is the mud parameters? What is the treatment you have done? What is the comment? You write a comment about everything you have done. You write the, you write the operation update. And also the paperwork may include something related to the in inventory management also. Again, inventory management, as I told you, the most important one. You send inventory, uh, you send a chemical request to the warehouse. You receive a ticket from the warehouse, so you record it. So the real work is very important. Customer satisfaction. We are working as a mud engineer for a service companies. That means that we are introducing a service to a customer, which is who, uh, who is a company man. So we are trying to not only company man, we are trying to provide the customer satisfaction with the company that we are working with. And the customer satisfaction include that we have good mud to drill. And if we have any problem, we will not hide. We treat it and we will report to company man so that he know. So customer satisfaction is very important part. Also safety contribution, and this is for all of us on the rig, not only mud engineer, you have to contribute to safety. You have to take care of your chemicals. Uh, if, if do you have any expired chemical in location, you should backload them. Do you have a CHB or chemical hazard bullet in for the chemical? You should put it in front of the chemical so that anyone work with uh, this chemical know the handling procedure for this chemical. So this is a quick overview of my day on the rig. I care about the inventory a lot. I care about the bit management, make a routine uh, fluid checks, preparing the mixing recipe for the direct man, doing my paperwork, and try all the time to uh, provide customer satisfaction and contribute to the safety. Okay, with this slide, we are in the end of uh, our session webinar. I will answer question only in two minutes because I have work now. Okay. Okay. Thank, thanks. Thanks, Engineer. Uh, uh, Thank we can choose the uh, one of the questions they send in the chat. Okay. You'd like to choose one? Okay, I will choose one. Um, whole cleaning of you. Okay, just. Which type of chemical used in uh, the fluid, the drilling fluid? Um, we have a, a lot of chemical time, but uh, you know, there is wetting material, as I told you. For example, something called the barite, which is, which is barium, barium sulfate. Uh, this is, uh, we use polymer a lot. The, the polymer, the polymer uh, uh, development help the drilling fluid industry very much. So we use uh, polymers, uh, different type of polymers. You know, uh, you know, polymers is different uh, from uh, the chain weight. Uh, if we have medium, medium chain weight, so we can use this as uh, fluid loss uh, reduce uh, reducing agent. If we have high uh, molecule weight or chain weight, we can use it as a viscosifier. We use uh, something called the amines, as I told you, for shell inhibition and shell encapsulating. So a lot of uh, chemical type. Uh, do we use drilling uh, fluid? Do we use uh, drilling fluid from the beginning?
to the end of the win? Sure. <laughs> oh, it's an interesting question. Sure, we use all the time the well should have a fluid, even when we have a complete loss. When we have a complete loss. And uh, in the last session of, of uh, the 4x4, four four, we will have the drilling related problems. And one, uh, one of the most uh, common one is the complete loss. If we have a complete loss even, we should we should uh, fill the uh, the well with water just to keep hydrostatic head. Uh, even if this head is, is lower than, but lower than the, the formation pressure, but we, sh we should keep all the time. Uh, for example, uh, and this is a nightmare when we have a blue out, uh, underground blue out, which is uh, a kick plus uh, uh, com uh, complete loss, and this is a nightmare, actually a nightmare. So yes, we should have a fluid inside the well all the time. Mohsen uh, Khan, uh, thanks for the webinar, thank you. Can you please give uh, more webinar in the important topic like OBM loss control stack by? I just said this, I already will uh, do a four by four uh, course in the 31 of August, it will cover most of these topics. So uh, I hope you join us and we will talk uh, a lot about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Njinam. Thank you for your outstanding presentation and beneficial information. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, as Njinam said, uh, we will be having a 4 by 4 program uh, starting uh, 31st of August. So make sure to uh, register in the form to join us in the program. Also, uh, don't forget to fill the feedback form for us to get better in uh, the upcoming webinars and courses. And make sure uh, to stay healthy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Njinam. Thank you for you and uh, thank you for everyone. And I hope uh, you got the benefit from uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, and I will be happy to, to, to see your feedback about this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.